Hello, everybody, and welcome to Keeping It Spiritually Simple. And today, I, I just, I'm like beside myself excited here and honored to have my guest um, for many different reasons. One is I've, I've worked with her uh, back in 2017 and 18, which literally changed my life. And uh, to be back here in this setting to interview her is uh, just amazing. So uh, Miss Elizabeth Wood is uh, a seer, a world-renowned seer, actually, uh, medical intuitive, um, healer. Uh, she does things on the quantum level. She's got different scientific, you know, educational degrees. She's just insanely rounded and perfect for whatever everybody needs. So welcome, Elizabeth. How are you? I'm really glad to talk to you. It's really exciting to see people I've worked with before stepping into all their power. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I would probably say, you know, I came across you somewhere, maybe a podcast or something. And I was, I don't work with people unless I'm really drawn to it or there's a need. And so being intuitive myself, I was drawn to you and um, you know, even in our first conversation, we weren't sure, I wasn't sure where things were going. And that's one of the beautiful things to think about surrendering and allowing someone else to really pick up what it is that that's needed. And for me, it was uh, detoxing of uh, metals, you know, from past mercury uh, fillings and just different things throughout my life. And, um, you know, your, your suggestions and advice were so spot on, but they were also gentle you know, and yet so powerfully effective. So <clears throat> let's talk in general because your practice has grown since then to many more things. So let's just talk a little bit about, you know, what's brought you to all this and, and uh, what you're offering people. And then we'll go into some questions about some things that are going on right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my, my short version of how I ended up doing this work is I grew up as a seer from the beginning and it's really interesting because I've recently, and this is kind of uh, a segue slightly in, into what's happening to people, <laughs> but recently I've been going through a lot of suppressed memories from my childhood because I was a very excellent psychic seer, even as a little toddler, but I grew up in Nazi barracks all over Germany. So I'm, sifting through the bottom of the pot of my um my energy field and my my life when it comes to trauma and that's kind of the thing that's happening at the moment but wanting to help people heal trauma wanting to help myself heal trauma i got into science and was in academia for a decade and received a master's degree in anthropology because that was the most broad science, which was able to creatively and very um, uh, qualitative and quantitatively help me understand that I wasn't alone, that there were lots of people all over the world like me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I was looking at this sort of like a superpower, like, well, what are the, what are the other superpowers humans have that nobody <laughs> talks about? Um, and, and I wanted to be a professor, but that wasn't in the destiny cards. And I ended up getting a job as a personal assistant for a mystic and then started my mysticism training. And I've been doing mysticism for over 12 years now. So just as much science training as mysticism. And that was like the science of spirituality, the science of consciousness. And so with these two things, I've been able to figure out different ways to help people heal quickly, but also why we need to heal and which is mainly to remember who we are. But that being said, then being a creator being in the end is the ultimate goal. And that whole journey has led me to now do work as a trainer, as a mentor, as a mystic who is helping other people step into their power and their skill sets, their superpowers, and then turn them into functioning businesses or be able to then be able to just receive. I have clients who are elderly and, you know, they've been doing healing for ages and ages, you know, they've mm. done their time 
And sometimes they just come to me to get some quantum healing and some really gentle insight on their bodies and their journey and somebody to give them a hug from 10,000 miles away. So that's something too that's on the plate that people really need. Mm -hmm. But that kind of leads into, well, a lot of changes have happened over the past 22 years since the year 2000. And we've come into a realm of exponential shifting, but we're here at the end of a 12,000 year cycle. And it's a galactic cycle. It's a scientifically measurable cycle. It's a difficult time. And it's probably the most intense cycle that will have ever happened on this planet because we have more incarnate souls here than before. And so a lot of people who've been through these cycles are here. The Atlantis folks, the Lemurian folks, the Egyptian and Melchizedek eras, all these different falls, all these different shifts on earth were extremely dramatic and painful. And this one's not different. It's dramatic and painful right now. But the really interesting part too is we're in a new place in space. So literally our galaxy is in a place that it's never been. And we're being bombarded by energy and light that we've never accessed before, even in this whole galactic history. So what's gonna happen to us? Well, all of the dense stuff, the bottom of the pot, you know, all of us have been working really hard on our trauma, but you're getting an opportunity to scrape the bottom of the pot clean. And that's the densest, most difficult stuff not always just your stuff it's your soul level stuff it's your genetic trauma so that's coming up right now the hardest stuff people's worst nightmares somebody asked me the other day are we in hell in a genuine in like a genuine question and I said well actually I've been to hell like a few times and yeah this is kind of what hell's like you're in your own bubble that you projected in this case it wasn't made for you mm -hmm. but but you made it <laughs> mm -hmm. and you're in this bubble of projection and you're trying to hold it together and it's this false universe that you've created and your worst nightmares are showing up your worst nightmares are on the table but actually in mysticism this is awesome this is amazing this is your chance to finally get to the very bottom of your subconscious and be free of what you thought was the worst possible thing that could happen to you, what you're most afraid of. And it turns out that when you go through that, it's actually not the thing that is going to really end up being what you thought it was. <laughs> the, th the thing you're worst, most afraid of is actually not going to kill you at all. And it's not nearly as bad as you thought most of the time. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean it's not going to include death and grief and all these things. Anger, rage are on the table too. It means that there is no death and there is no frequency in this universe that can destroy your conscious soul. And this is what we're figuring out oh my goodness, I am not Elizabeth, really. This is the name of my body. And this body's choosing all the time to be with my soul. Mm. Who am I? And when you are realizing, wow, we have an entire uh, set of beings interested in us. Why? Why? Why would demons and angels be interested in us? Mm. Now people are starting to figure out that they've been lied to that they are not stupid, that they are not useless, that they are not a virus or a cancer on this world, mm. that they are actually creator beings and that they are immortal and that these bodies are an incredible, beautiful technology worthy of protecting and our DNA is worthy of protecting. And they're starting to figure it out as the shattering of their reality is happening. They're starting to realize and and yet still I'm here. Wow, why? Why am I so powerful? You know, what purpose do I have? I was talking mm -hmm. to a young man just the other day, 23 years old in South Africa. And he was really pretty despondent. He said he felt like he had no purpose. He had anxiety all the time and depression. And I said, I'm so glad 
that you're asking these questions now at 23 as a young man, as a powerful man, because when you finally get these answers, which is happening now, <sighs> your world's going to break open and you're going to start to recognize who you are, but you're going to do it at 23. Yes. And you're, you're going to help rebuild this planet. And you're going to be this strong, divine, masculine presence. And, and I was giving him this download, this sort of template of power that I'm trying to give now. Like, it doesn't matter that I was a toddler seeing Nazi ghosts. You know, it, that has made me a better person. Mm -hmm. that, that suffering has made me who I am. And now I value that whole half of the library of consciousness that is really harsh and brutal, yeah. but it's full of power. And so eventually this young man is going to value that time of anxiety, depression, and feeling like he doesn't have a purpose. He's going to value it. And he's going to say, gosh, now I can actually relate and have compassion for so many people. Mm -hmm. So this is a, uh, this is a time of, of the most intense self-inquiry ever happening to the human race. And since hell is here, that means that you're gonna figure out it's not what it what you thought it was. Mm -hmm. it, it's an illusion. Yeah. And then as hell breaks, because you're gonna break your own gate. There's a gate for everybody. That's why they say gates of hell, because everybody has their own gate. Mm -hmm. You're going to break the gate. And when you break the gate with your consciousness, you don't have to know what you're doing. You just have to be and exist in your power and know I exist. Therefore, I am powerful in my consciousness. I am an observer, a creator of the universe. And as you start to figure out that that's true, that's when heaven comes. Heaven is created by those of us who are willing to stand in their power and to actually keep taking hold of the moment and recognizing this is where all my action is. I can't leak my energy into the past or the future by worrying anymore. I have to yeah. be here right now. What do I need to do? And we ask God and we ask the guides and we say, help me, help me figure out what I need to do right now. And it's always there in the moment. And that's where heaven begins. And the earth is creating it too. She's conscious as well. And she wants heaven too. So what is heaven? Well, heaven is absolutely a multidimensional experience. And that's what we're figuring out that we are because things are getting more strange and all the illusions and lies are shattering. That's what apocalypse means. It means the revealing. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. Finding clarity. So that's what I'm seeing at the moment of what's happening. It's pretty intense. You know, it's very intense, but you know, Elizabeth, you know, it just, it brings me to some of the things that I do. And it's like, I wish that I had opened the gates more and shattered the ceilings as a younger person versus tripping over it and trying to figure things out on my own, because you didn't have the support of this realm, <clears throat> so to speak, that meaning I knew I was connected and had much going on. However, the support team of what was here on earth, there was very few there to support you on it. And I know through my work, it's like, let's get in there now. It doesn't matter what age you are. The point is, let's get in there now. But now the goal is, let's try to help some of the younger folks get in there now too, because their parents are doing it or their sister or sibling or grandparent is doing it. And it it just helps to um, have that echo effect to to get us to where we need to be. And I, I got to tell you, I, I, I just love listening to you. I just want to do, just do this and just listen and listen. And listen. So I'm going to be quiet. Keep, let, let you keep going about what it is that, that, and then I will do some Q and a. So go ahead. Yeah. I like what you're saying. Um, a lot of women of your particular age group and, and I'm fairly young still, I'll be 40 this year. Mm. Um, but your particular age group and older so like baby 70s, boomers yeah mm. like 50s to 70s right mm -hmm. we've got this, this that was a graceful era. time link there thank you <laughs> and th this group of especially women but men too um they feel like they've had a bungee cord around their body holding them back all this time and i call it the bungee cord effect 
but they're frustrated, they're angry. And they've, they've kind of gone through this political and, and social process of blame, which is fair enough because the patriarchy has been brutal to women especially, mm -hmm. but it's also hurt men too because it was actually a select elite that was mainly men who created these systems of power. Yes. And, and it certainly used men as cannon fodder and as slaves too. Um, and used men to hurt women. Um, but then there's also the dark feminine piece too, and women hurting other women. And I bring this up because these things are up for healing now. A lot of women are going through a questioning of, can I trust other women? Because they've been backstabbed or hurt so many times by other women in competition. And so the, the antidote, of course, is collaboration like this where we're in equanimity. It doesn't matter if you came to me for a session before, I don't see you as a student, I see you as, as a peer. Mm -hmm. And the, the end of the sort of student teacher norm where the teacher remains the teacher forever, it, it actually needs to be a back and forth thing. I had a young friend in his late 20s say to me the other day, he said, you could be a teacher, but then you could be the student of the person you taught and eventually you're neither. And that's exactly what is happening. Eventually we're neither. We're, we're all at the cutting edge, all of us. It doesn't even matter how awake you are or where you are multidimensionally connected. You're at the edge of consciousness. And what you haven't been able to see because no one told you to turn around is the armies of angelic beings and the armies of galactic help behind you and that stuff's hard to see because we're often being drawn into worrying about the future and yet you have an entire army at your back so you need to start ordering them around first off and starting to tell these angels what to do you know they really need you to tell them what to do because they respect human sovereignty so much that they can't interfere it's part of their prime directive and People forget this because they really were never taught that in this lifetime most of the time. So a lot of these folks feeling like they had a bungee cord holding, holding them back, but I have an important point. Everybody hates the bungee cord because you're trying to go hundred miles an hour. But my friends, if you had been doing that during these eras over the past 70 to 50 so years, if you'd been going hundred miles an hour, what do you think would have happened to you? Mm -hmm. You would have got banished or murdered. Mm -hmm. So that bungee cord <clears throat> actually was set up perfectly by you to save your life. Now it's time for you to take the bungee cord off. Yeah. Now, now the changes that you carved away under duress are in play to the point where somebody my age can step into their power without being persecuted, prosecuted, attacked and actually help out. So that's why the bungee cord was in place. It's yeah. gone now, but it was really necessary. Otherwise all of you would be dead and I would be right now trying to do the job that you actually accomplished. Mm -hmm. and so, or attempted to accomplish. Of course. Yeah. And, and you know, the world wasn't ready for all of these women and men, but especially the women to go hundred miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And now it is, now it's time, now it's go time. And it's go time for the men too, because all of those men, all of you guys are master builders. You are master architects, either of consciousness or of actual matter. And you need to be building the new monuments that are gonna help save our planet. Yes. These monuments were not built for fun. They were built to protect our electromagnetic planet. These monuments create electromagnetic and negative ion fields that will keep our food safe. This is very real 3D measurable stuff. Our electromagnetic field is disappearing right now. In 20 years, it will be gone. By then we will have all starved to death. Mm. This is the thing that no one wants to talk about. I, I hear you. Because, because the elite have kept you from being able to hear it. And now it's time. So I've been waiting 
for the right time. But now it's time. 2022. Who knew? Who knew that it was going to be the last stand of humanity? But here's the cool part. We've already won. You know how I know we've won? Is because they're throwing everything they've got at us. They don't have any cards to play left. None. They don't have any cards to play. They've thrown the tippy top worst demonic beings from the, the heights of hell down upon us and they're failing. Mm -hmm. Those beings have never been here before. <laughs> they're here because they've lost and they're trying to push one last big, huge effort, one last global war, one last fear mongering. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've lost, they know it. And so this is their scramble because the Indra's net, the network of humanity is turned on. Now it takes time for lots of little lights to turn on when you get mm -hmm. a, a switch flipped, but it's happening. And it's very subtle in some ways. It's subtle like people saying, I don't wanna to listen to the news anymore. Like one day they're talking about one thing, the next day they're talking another, what happened to the other thing? Are we just not supposed to worry about that? Cause you've been making us worry for years and years. And so they're sick and tired of it. Or they're saying, you know, none of this makes sense. Like these are not logical actions or, you know, I really do feel like we need to start, you know, preparing a little better. Maybe we should put some food and water aside and get to know our neighbors. Yeah. You know, some stuff's kicking in, some basic, simple things that are kicking in right now. And other folks, the majority of the women I'm talking to right now in session are literally showing up and saying, I think I need to quit my job and become a healer. Like a lot of them. <laughs> right, Sandra too, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's time, and it's not that that like they should have done it a long time ago. That's not true. It wouldn't have worked out for them. It's that now it's time. Yeah. So th this year is the time, especially for the feminine, to come step back into their power. And one of the greatest skills that women have is nurturing and healing, among many skills. And masculine healing and feminine healing are unique. And I think that these women stepping up into healing, they're worried. They're worried that they're not gonna be popular enough, that no one's gonna wanna hear them, that they're gonna have to have all their shit together before they can do anything. And that's not true. I always like to tell people about my stuff, about my vulnerabilities, about my suffering, because that's actually what has made it easier for people to wanna work with me. It, the message I have might be similar to yours, but you have a unique essence in this world. There are people out there who need to hear your light version of your essence, not mine. It will resonate better for them mm -hmm. coming from you. Certain people will resonate with me. Like I, I had a friend of mine, um, she went and uh, she, had, she, she knew a lot about my work. And then she went and learned from this other lady and who's a bit older. And she's like, why don't you teach stuff like that, Elizabeth? Why don't you teach uh, the same things that she does? Cause you know, she's right. And I said, well, I do teach those things. I do. It's that you found someone whose essence helped you to absorb what was being taught better than me. And that's wonderful. Yeah. Like, I'm not mad or jealous. That's crazy. I'm excited that there's more people. This is collaboration. This is elevating one another. There is no competition. It is a lie. That is not possible. You are so unique that there is nothing else or nobody else even quite like you for you to compete with. So we might be doing similar healing techniques, but there's no way in heck that you'll be able to compare them ultimately in the long run because they're totally different essences doing it. So this is why we need all these folks to, to step up and do this work because you're gonna serve a certain amount of people who really need you, who won't be able to get their needs met by me. No matter if the work is similar, no matter if I seem more advanced, it doesn't matter. 
yeah. or, or somebody else, it doesn't matter. The don't worry about advancement. Don't worry about mastery by practicing it, by sharing it, by being you, you're going to master what you came to do. You're already a master. It's just time to remember that. And that's what these folks are realizing. Like, Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I am a healer. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to do this other thing I've been doing, like teaching elementary school or doing this marketing thing or whatever. I, I really just want to help people heal. I know I can do it because I've been working on my kid or my cat and, or my husband or my girlfriend, but you know, that's the key is keep doing it. Yes. Don't stop. There's somebody out there who needs you tomorrow. And if you stop, then they will not get their needs met and they'll fall off the, the wagon. So this is where we're at. And I guess one other, one other glimpse would be the healing of the masculine and feminine relationship. And I'm not talking about marriage, right? I'm talking about, I'm talking about these two versions of the human body who, because all of us have been men and women in many lives. I'm like half and half. I've had half male and half female lives. Mm -hmm. and, in, and in this lifetime, a lot of that comes through. Um, and so, and, but there's some folks who've been mainly women mm -hmm. and that really shows up. Like these ladies are super feminine and make me look like a dude. Yeah. Um, and then, the, then there's guys who've been like men, like forever. <clears throat> And they're the most masculine, manly men out there, right? And everybody in between. This is why, so for example, like the transgender revolution is actually really important to look at from a spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these folks, for example, have been mainly men and then they got put into, they, they picked female body because they knew it was going to be more formless, but they didn't realize that they were going to have a hard time. Mm -hmm. being in a yeah. female body because it was so different and they know like deep in their soul like I am more of a man well yeah and you picked a female body to test some stuff out and to try some new stuff out some new energies out because women have access to certain things and so there's nothing wrong with any of that I think it's really important to honor it as a spiritual part of someone's journey the discovery of who they really are and so as we get down, you know, past this individuation, um, you can't go down the hole of identity forever and ever. You, you don't find yourself down there, man. You, you will find yourself when you go on the journey of the soul. Yes. And you say, who am I as a soul? And you realize the soul is not a human. The soul is light and far more formless. And where does it come from? Who's shining that light? That's the journey of real identity. That's the universal self. Yeah. And so that's going to that's gonna come to play soon enough. Um, but I, I really want people to recognize that if we're going to do this whole heaven on earth thing, that golden gate of the divine masculine and feminine, which is in all of us, is needing to be recognized to be healed and in equanimity standing together you you can't fit through the door if you only open one door we as humanity can fit through the door if we open both together at the same time mm -hmm. and so there has to be a deep deep honoring and here's like a cool way to think of it right now i've decided that i'm just simply in a state of awe and worship almost not like godly worship um but a state of worship for the masculine and a state of worship for the feminine. So all these women, instead of being jealous that they're prettier than me, because they, they certainly are, um, I, I just worship them. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, I'm just so astounded at how beautiful and amazing you are. Look at how powerful you are. Look at what you've just accomplished switching jobs and taking a leap into something amazing that's that is astounding to me look at the power of your body having brought through these children having nurtured this household and then looking at the masculine and being in awe of what they can do from everything from opening jars to <laughs> to rebuilding the planet and 
these are the guys who are going to build the new monuments, the new, the new things that will help us survive. So I'm in total worship of the human race at the moment and everything that it offers, even as, even when it's strange, even when it seems dark, it's amazing that we have the capacity to have such a creation that we can create such dark and light things. And I'm amazed. And that wonder keeps me neutral so that I don't act out of anger or hatred. And then I'm impossible to track because you only get tracked, you only get attacked when you give them something to follow. When you leave mud wherever you go because you're angry and you're traumatized, that's when you have a backlash. But when you only leave neutrality, nobody can find you. You, you can't be attacked. You can't be pushed down. You can't be oppressed mm -hmm. because any oppression that shows up, you're just going to merge with it and turn it into neutrality anyway. And they don't have power over you. These yeah. sorts of dark things that happen, the hell, the hell world doesn't have power over you anymore. And then you create heaven. So this is what I'm seeing as like a broader, like long-term uh, vantage point of where we're headed and what's necessary. Well, it's interesting that you were saying, you know, people leaving their jobs and becoming healers and me raising my hand, but you know, I've been a healer all my life. Yeah. And it really wasn't until um, my second marriage, you know, in the nineties that, um, well, actually before that, um, I was into Tarot, I was into all kinds of things, but it was incognito. It was like, you'd be at one job and everyone would think you were your supervisor and this or that, but then your underground work was the Tarot and the side things that you didn't bring out over to here. And then in the nineties, you know, my uh, husband at the time really wasn't the big fan of it, but he wasn't against it either, but I had to do everything incognito. But the more I gained momentum about understanding myself and the more sessions I went and found somebody to work with me or me work with them, you know, gain momentum, but it was still such a tiny cell of people. But I knew through my work in the nineties that I was in covert, that I was covert, that I couldn't completely come out because I wouldn't have the support and all kinds of other things that were going on. And fast forward another decade and another decade and so many other things. And then finally, you know, 2020 spirit was pointed at the computer and said, that's what you're doing, girl. And you're <laughs> going to trust us. And it's not going to be mainstream paychecks. And it's going to have some, some quiet times and some busy times. But this is what you're supposed to do. So own it. Because, you know, in, in, a, in an age part of it, I'm more like people's grandmothers. But I'm also the wise sage because I've been through yeah. so very, very much. And then you're talking about, you know, the, the masculine and the feminine. And I think when we ourselves work on ourselves and get rid of that sediment and bring, stir it up, get rid of the mud, and we're doing things that no harm, no harm. That's the number one rule I've always had. No harm, whether it's a thought, something that's said, a, a body language towards somebody, I have to correct that, forgive myself before it even starts. But the masculine and feminine have got to merge together. And so it's been okay for some women to be a little woo-woo, but not so much always for the men. And so now it's really nice to see that we're going to be merging because we're not going to have a choice. It's going to be about survival of all of us. So we have to merge together. So the work that you're doing and, and, and so many people that are going to come up and out from, from their chairs, watching from a distance, maybe awake or not awake, are going to start having these uh, for a lack of a better word, kundalini, I don't know, just you're going to realize that you've got to get up and do your part. You can no longer sit back and watch what's right. happening anymore. It's like, okay. And then what you were saying about, you know, in hell and so on and so forth, I've, I've had a few come towards me and I, I'd look at them. And I'm like, you have no power here. And I just exit stage left, you know, yeah. because what I do is, 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 fully from the heart, from the God center, as you do. And when you were saying about some people may resonate with, with you and some people may resonate with someone else, it's a frequency, but we all wind up getting where we need to go. And for me, even when I refer somebody out, I'm like, 
oh my gosh, you're getting there. This is so exciting. You know, it's like, okay, one more, one more launch. Yes, 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 yes. And so I get it. It's, it's your proud mama, you know, like, yes, yes, yes. Exactly. you know, you get it. So, but you do so many different things. I mean, you're remote viewing, you know, you do the, the quantum anthropology, you do so many different things. I know just from my work with you, just simply doing, you know, a protocol and talking to you every, you know, having session every so often was I met my higher self, you know, and then awakening started happening. Why? Because um, as much work as I had done up to there, this was a whole different level of work. You know what I mean? Everybody has different levels that they have to be at. And I, at the time was needing to get more quantum in 2016, 17, and so on. So I had to understand that. So my vision started coming in more and visitors started coming in. So yeah. yes, I, like I said, I shouldn't be talking. I should just, you just oh, no, I I'm, your, like, I I'm just like, I'm just like, uh... right. I like, I like that you talk about it being covert. Cause that's, that's you recognizing as a soul, Hey, I've got this bungee cord on, but it's necessary for now. Yes. And, and, and it kept you alive. Yes. Um, and that's what was most needed. So, yeah. And I, you know, you're bringing up trust and surrender. Um, and that's so hard to do because most people have shut their third eye down in some way or another because of fear most of the time. Um, doesn't mean that their third eyes don't work, but they feel like they're trusting blind and Here's why, you know, Sandra and I are celebrating people right now, stepping into these roles, because the way consciousness is built from the, everybody ignores the first and second dimension. It's too bad because they're amazing. The second dimension has everything to do with relationship. And in the second dimension, it is built in that you will always need other people to help you see yourself and um, including me and I'm an incredibly good psychic but I need help to see myself I actually just received a session from my teacher yesterday and I didn't ask her any questions and over the years she's always complained that she she's not very psychic and it and it makes her so frustrated and she's mainly a warrior an incredible strategist, mind-blowing, impeccable strategist. And, um, you know, we've been doing things on a back burner that, you know, may or may not ever come to light, um, where we're unraveling the spider's web of the, of the darkness. But she um, did this reading for me yesterday, and she was so spot on. And I said to her afterwards, I'm like, I don't know, you know, if you're worried about being psychic anymore because you're incredibly psychic now. But that's what that inner work does. She's healed her trauma and her ego, and now her psychic abilities that she's always wanted are really spot on. I mean, she just nailed stuff that I had not even talked to her about. Mm -hmm. And I said, see, <laughs> like, see how accurate you are? Like, this is amazing. Um, like, congratulations for finally being in the position where you've stopped worrying about being psychic. So now you're psychic. <laughs> well, it's also your energies together. Your energies together can help open each other That's up right. too. And, you That's know, right. I, I I've said on other videos, I never stopped getting worked on because to me, it's just taking me, opening me up because if I'm working on myself, sometimes we get in our own way. And then yeah. we have people that we can trust and surrender to that, you know, and even if, in the session, you're like, well, I didn't, well, I don't know about that. It, it may open up like a week later, a month later or whatever. And it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and then lots of times when you're in sessions, you're like, I kind of knew that, or that really feels right to me. Although it feels like new information. It's really not new information, you know? That's so that's really powerful. Well, what do you say to those who have been on this path that, I mean, there's a lot of people I hear you know, they're, they're going through bizarre weight gain, no matter what's different, thinning hair, scattered, scattered thoughts, 
uh, energies up and down. So for, for and, I, and it's mostly women I'm, I'm hearing this from, and, and I experience it myself, but what would we say to, to people that are just going through, because it's a lot of work to do what we do. It, okay. it's, a, it's a lot of work and you, and you know this. It's a 24 seven job to, you know, do. I, I was in a store the other day and someone said something and I said, oh, oh, no, 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 no. I've worked so hard to release all that karma. I am not gaining another ounce of that. So I'm going to walk away from this. I'm going to extend <laughs> give you all a lot of love and I'm going to walk out the door. But, but my, my ink, but if I wasn't paying attention, it could have been, I could have gotten caught up right up there in it just because that's just what general public, so to speak, does. But my point is, it's a lot of work to maintain yourself, to be the best that you can be on many different levels so that you can be the best healer for yourself first and then for others. So you have to be that walking example of the epitome and the embodiment of working with the soul. While also recognizing how screwed up real life is. <laughs> you yes. mean like, I'm actually, oh yeah, that's right. I have a body. I got to work with this. Wait, no, like, I gotta, I gotta work with this body, and then, then you, then you hear the weight gain, thinning of the hair, the energy levels, yes, and you're like, oh, f this, I, I'm done, I'm out. <laughs> I gotta take a week or two off. I can't do this crap anymore. Exactly. So, let's talk to so people who are kind of going through that. I have an answer, and it's not one that's easy to hear. Um, right now, this hair falling out, the weight gain the skin sh stuff showing up. Yeah. Th these are all signs of radiation exposure. Mm -hmm. And it's not from a war. It's from the sun and the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And so that's happening to all of us, including me. Um, and a lot of the older women here where I live too are suffering very badly from it. And so mm -hmm. women tend to be the canary in the coal mine for this because we're more formless. So we can absorb a lot more stuff. Literally, I'm, it, this is a very physical thing. Females are more formless, which means that we can like literally 3D print new human bodies and these sorts of things if we wanted mm -hmm. to. But more than that, we're conduits and we're canaries. In the coal mine, which is a American adage, the canary would be in the coal mine. And if poison gas came in, the canary would die yes. before the, the workers would. So so if the canary died, they knew to get out. And so that's where that term comes from. Uh, I realize that a lot of uh, UK and Australian folks don't know that term. Like Groundhog the, Day. <laughs> yeah. so, so what's happening actually is that the lowering of the electromagnetic field is causing us to have radiation bombardment. And this is all over the world. Now, it's not only doing stuff to your body, it's doing stuff to the microbes in the soil. And so our food is less nutritious and it will continue to be. And a lot of people are noticing a larger percentage of their crops are dying, including here in Ecuador. Everyone thinks we're all food sovereign here. And I said, oh, heck no, we're not. No, we're not because we're quite close to the sun, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're closer and, to the equator, yes. Yeah, and Ecuador lost 37% of its crops last year. Mm. Ecuador did. And we, we're, we're in like gorgeous paradise weather every single day of the year. We have three growing seasons, not just one or two. So um, this is what's happening to humans. Now, what can you do about it? There's something you can do. You need to take niacin iodine. It's absolutely vital that everyone that is listening to this start taking iodine. Iodine is really special. But the other thing you need to do to mitigate this and, and protect yourself is to stop eating processed foods. So all the dines in the periodic table are used for food preservation. And oh. the, the, the thyroid doesn't know the difference yes. between, between food pres preservation dines and iodine. And this food preservation dine has basically filled up your thyroid full of false versions of iodine that were used to preserve the, the, the bread in a bag that you got or the 
crackers in a box or the mm -hmm. uh, noodles in a box or the lasagna in the freezer. So these things are really important to go into a whole foods diet and just start with whole foods and, and try your very best not to buy anything in a box, especially for the kids and um, anything with dyes in it as well, because those dyes also go through the polysorbate 80, which is in most of our foods, uh, yeah. and, uh, most of our processed foods causes many of these things to cross the blood brain barrier. And you don't need food preservation and uh, nitric stuff in your brain. So that's really important to get rid of those processed foods because a lot of it's crossing into your brain, which is starting to build up and it causes a constant mind fog. Yeah. And so, so this is, the, it's not so insidious as, you know, uh, nuclear radiation from war or, or you know, the, the true conspiracy that a lot of our processed food is poison. It's actually simple as is as simple as getting back to the human basics of whole foods and anything that, you know, you, you're, you're sticking with stuff that has one ingredient an apple is an apple. Um, and that's really key. So slowly taking iodine every day will replace these dines out of your system. You don't want to take a whole bunch. It'll dump them into your system and you'll get sick. Um, but you just take a little every day and it's going to replace the the fake dines with the iodine then you're going to lose the weight your hair is going to come back you're going to get your mind back now a lot of folks also have a lot of heavy metals in their system from a lot of the processed foods and other things and the most simple way to get rid of these heavy metals is a slow way i literally healed myself from lead poisoning i was dying I healed myself from lead poisoning with these two ingredients, bentonite or zeolite clay mm -hmm. and cilantro or coriander. Yes. And cilantro is like a miracle. It pulls heavy metals out of your brain and your bones, but slowly. Now you don't have to like cilantro, suck it up. <laughs> yeah, there's put ways you can soup. do it. There's what you can put yeah. a liquid liquid in, a, in, a, in a juice or something. In yeah. Yes. And, and, you know, it, hold your nose and take a shot of the juice cilantro. Eat fresh cilantro. If you can't get that, eat the coriander seeds. But it slowly pulls it out. And then that bentonite or that zeolite clay, um, I, I like, I, for me to heal very extreme lead poisoning, I did it twice a day. But if, you, if you're not dying of lead poisoning, do it once a day. And you just take a teaspoon of bentonite or zeolite clay and it'll absorb those uh, heavy metals and then you'll expel them. And, and it, it actually works quite quickly. Here's a really cool story real quick to, um, to illustrate this so that people understand this works. Don't just take it from me. I had a client who called me up and she said, you are our last hope. My husband has Parkinson's. He finally can't talk anymore. We're all absolutely devastated. What do I do? And, you know, this is during a time, and I want to illustrate this, that I didn't fully believe in my skills. Right. Because I really have had a lot of problems with worthlessness. And so I, I thought in my head, while I'm talking to this poor woman, oh my gosh, like, how am I going to help this guy? I don't know. And I said, all right, wait, you know, got to do what you always do. Get out of the way and stop thinking that you know anything at all, which you don't. And just see, like, let source show you. So I asked, source, show me what this man needs. And we got his diet changed a little bit, but we added the cilantro and we added the bentonite or zeolite clay. In two weeks, he could talk. And then slowly but surely, he began to be able to function more. And she emailed me. She's like, it's a freaking miracle. Like, even the doctors don't understand. And I said, it's because Parkinson's is a heavy metal problem. And I don't know that, but Source does. And, and it had nothing to do with me at all. But getting out of the way to see what he needed because he was ready to heal, it was possible. So that happened 
And it's absolutely real for all of us to get better. And as much as I'd love to tell you that losing your hair and like having skin issues and gaining weight is ascension problems, it's not. <laughs> it has to do with the electromagnetic field. But we can still do something about it. You are not relegated to suffering or, you know, right. um, or, or, or this, uh, this dislike of your body. So that's, that's kind of my advice at this moment around what people are going through. It's very physical and real stuff and it's okay. You can still heal. It's never too late. Like Sandra's saying, it's never too late. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. I switched my, my thing. <clears throat> so a lot of that with the build up that would, that would be part of the disruptive thought process too. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So bentonite or zeo, like, so, you know, I remember when we did ours uh, back in 17 or something, we talked about, we, I did um, diametaceous earth. And so what's the difference between diametaceous earth and zeolite? Sure. Cause we so, switched off after a period of time we switched. I remember. Yeah. And, I, and I think for you, if I can remember correctly, the diatomaceous earth and it's made of diatoms. They're the bodies of uh, micro um, uh, sea creatures. They're the little bones and they're really yes. sharp. And so it's diatom, diatomaceous earth. And these little um, bodies of the, or the bones of these creatures, they actually can scrape dead cells off of the walls of your digestive system. And they also um, are act as a magnet for positive ions Stuff, which is bacteria, candida, and heavy metals and viruses. And so diatomaceous earth, a little bit for a period of time, like up to two weeks, people, ancient people used to use it to deworm their families and their farm. They didn't have a bunch of different medicines to get from the vet. They didn't have vets, but they knew that diatomaceous earth would kill all the, back, all the uh, parasites. They watched it because when the animal would go eat it, then all the worms would come out dead. And so they knew this over a long period of time. So they'd always seasonally, and here in Ecuador, we have to do it every three months, not just twice a year, because everything grows faster here. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you take diatomaceous earth, you're getting rid of a whole bunch of stuff, but especially candida. And a lot of people were not breastfed. And so they, for a lot of reasons, um, and they ended up with thrush as a baby, that's candida. And that is a mushroom and it actually has roots in your gut. And when it grows, you crave sugar and carbs, sound familiar? And then yeah. when it dies, yeah. And then, and then it goes through a cycle and it dies off. And when it dies off, it dumps a whole bunch of toxic chemicals into your body and you feel really sick. You feel exhausted. You can't think straight. You can't. You don't have any um, desire to eat. You feel like you almost are getting the flu. You might have stomach cramping. Lots of different symptoms: diarrhea and all sorts of things. So, um, the diatomaceous earth goes in and and gets the roots of the candida mushrooms out of your gut. Now, when we do that, then we kind of clean the slate and you get rid of a whole bunch of pathogens. And then you come in with the heavy metal cleanse and then the bentonite or zeolite comes in to help you out by absorbing all that, encapsulating it so that you can expel it. Um, and that way it doesn't create an environment that's helpful for the stuff you don't want to come back. So that's the difference. Diatomaceous earth is not a heavy metal cleanser so much as it is a reset for your gut because it kills off the bad bacteria, the viruses that are lingering and all this candida that's causing a lot of this brain fog as well. And most people have candida, even I am not a sugar eater really, but it's from, it's from way back in our childhood a lot of the time and those roots are still there subtly and I crave bread and wine and and sweets and I'm like oh the candida is talking because it, it literally it talks to your brain for real and then you're like when you're like craving that big huge loaf of bread or all those chips 
And you're like, why, why, why am I craving this? It's not you. <laughs> it's actually Candida talking to your brain. So you, you bow to it and say, all right, Candida, thank you. But this is my body. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not, you need to get out of this house. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Okay, so that's the difference. But people do need to be careful. Yes, and you need to get food grade of all of these things. If you mm -hmm. eat, if you eat industrial diatomaceous earth, folks, you're going to die. Yeah. So get food grade of anything you do and do it in little bit. You know, you might be suffering right now and you're like, if I take this whole bag, I'll feel better. No, don't do that. A yeah. little bit at a time yeah. over time works better because then you get rid of all the really powerful uh, candida guys or bacterias that um, are more resistant. So slowly, a little bit over time, that way you don't dump toxins into your body um, is way more optimal. And so that's why we were able to see results for this guy within two weeks. And, mm -hmm. and we wouldn't have seen it in a few days if we had dumped a whole bunch of stuff into his system, it would have made him worse. So we did it very slowly, but it took about two weeks and there were results. So just be really gentle. Um, more is not better in this. Yeah, case. less is more is always my motto. But I remember with the diametaceous earth, because at the time I had two roommates that were medical doctors and they saw it on the counter and they're like, that's fertilizer. And I'm like, <laughs> no. no, 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 earth. It's, 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 it's medicine. <laughs> do you see the dog and the cat? And the person all there? <laughs> it's, it's edible. It's okay. They're like, okay, okay. But I remember like, yeah, you know, and now everybody's just so into it and they're, they're overdosing on it. And I remember yes. like when we did ours years ago, it was like, no, you're going to use this for two weeks and you're going to stop. I mean, you have a protocol on it, which is yes. why people need sessions with you to I really understand. For, well, first off, you're, you're tuning into what it is that they need. Secondly, then you're, you're suggesting, you know, their whole protocol and folks, I can tell you it works and I'm going to need it again, <laughs> but, you know, back to the whole food thing, you don't need the preservatives and all the things when you're eating the whole food. Now I'm a big jokester. And so I've gone in and out of sugar cravings and so on. And right with the, the, uh, 220 March, you know, shutdown occurred, <laughs> I went to the Amish market and I like got a pie and I got some chocolate and I don't even like chocolate. <laughs> And I got something else and I, and I think I posted out, like I'm set. And then someone says, what are you doing? And I, I literally put a fork in the pie and I said, I'm a whole food eater. You know, I want to eat it up to fork it, you know, because I'm such a jokester, but you know, but many people right now, because of the stress and the things that are happening are reaching for foods that are not necessarily in their best interest for healthy gut, healthy mind, healthy, everything. Cause it's all one. But to be yeah. gentle, less is more. More is not more. I have it didn't happen overnight. Too. Yeah, it didn't happen overnight. And recently, all right, this is a big deal. Let me explain how big of a deal this is. I am from Olympia, Washington. I, you know, good, good portion of my early 20s I spent in Seattle, where they literally have a Starbucks across the street from a Starbucks. <laughs> right? This is like the home of fancy frappuccino whatever yeah proper laparate <laughs> right and recently i quit coffee and so that's how big of a deal it is i am the nor i'm a northwesterner and this is part of the culture there to drink coffee and be in coffee shops um and people literally work in coffee shops <laughs> like uh so i quit coffee and here's why um, when you drink coffee, it raises your cortisone levels and it can cause weight gain. And it actually causes a low level anxiety that is like being chased by a tiger. <laughs> and so I actually didn't have any withdrawals. I was surprised. I've been freaking drinking coffee since I was like 15. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have any withdrawals because it was time for me to quit coffee right now i'm drinking herba mate instead but um and and herba mate has a little bit of caffeine but not even comparable to coffee and so coffee has a lot of different compounds in it there's some good things and bad things about it if you really like coffee 
then actually take your coffee after lunch instead of morning time. Because when you do it in the morning, you've actually set yourself up for a crash of stress, an adrenal crash of stress. So for all of you who are feeling stressed out and anxiety, like, like especially during lockdown stuff, this is one of the ways you can do self-care is quit the coffee. Bring in fresh squeezed juices in the morning, bring in teas. Um, even green tea would be far, far better because it has a compound that binds with caffeine. So it's a slow release mm. of caffeine instead of a big burst of it. But you wanna make sure your cortisone levels are lower. And if you really need that boost in the afternoon, instead of sugar, have a cup of plain coffee with a little bit of coconut or almond milk in it or something, uh, maybe a little bit of honey. But it's really important for us to start to kind of um, back up from the things that we've been doing, especially when we're stressed out and just start kind of eliminating or bringing new things in and testing stuff out. Because humans naturally want to experiment with their well-being and they, because they want to find the optimal thing. And that's why having a session is best because the ideas I've presented to you um, are useful, but you are always going to be a unique case. And mm -hmm. there'll be very special things that will come through that'll be surprising for you. And when I do medical intuitive work, which not everybody asks me to do that, of course, but um, when I do a body scan, I can talk to your organs and they can tell me, I, we need these specific minerals. We need these foods. We miss the, you know, yellow food. <laughs> or they'll show me stuff that is really hard for us to see for ourselves. And that's really key to get seen, to be seen without judgment. And um, that, that'll be a game changer for folks as they actually feel like, wow, now I can do something that's going to give me results. And I didn't have to, you know, try to become a famous aerobics teacher to do it. Um, it mm -hmm. Maybe it was just quitting coffee and then you lost 10 pounds. Yeah. So I quit coffee. I've lost a a lot of weight but I'm working on a big mountain as well and climbing a mountain will definitely make you lose weight um, but I also have been taking iodine so mm -hmm. my neck actually isn't as swollen mm -hmm. if you go look at my old YouTube videos I look a lot different um, and so there's a lot going on and I'm testing this stuff out on myself too and I'm finding it's working too so I'm so glad <laughs> Well, you're, you're an amazing seer scientist. And I, I, you know, I remember when I first heard that I was like, seer scientist. Wow. That is freaking cool. I mean, <laughs> I mean, cause you're so well-rounded educational, spiritual, you know, multidimensional quantum, you've just got it all. Well, before we wrap this up, I'm hoping we'll have a part two, which will help everybody out there as well. But for right now, is there anything that you would like to just leave our viewers with and um yes give, yes please so the russians and the american scientists over the past 50 years or so maybe probably more um they've been studying the human mind and there's some really compelling scientific articles out there some of them first started in the 70s about meditation. Mm. And one of the most important attributes of meditation is that when you still your mind, you actually get control back over your vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is, is the kundalini. It mm. is the shashumna. It is it's the physical representation of the core of light through which your soul enters your body. And the vagus nerve is the electromagnetic guide post for everything you go through. It's through which also all of your subconscious and soul memory moves energy. And a lot of people are having problems with panic and anxiety and depression. And they feel hopeless and they feel like they can't get control over their body. Um, and I relate because I had really extreme PTSD and I say had because I got control of my vagus nerve now sometimes I'll have a panic attack still um, but I know what to do and here's a trick you know if, by the way if you have a panic attack stick an ice cube on your 
tongue and press it to the top of your mouth because it'll literally stop the panic attack right in that moment. It, mm. it, does, it, it shocks the vagus nerve into a reset. So the, um, you know, panic attacks happen to pretty much anybody. It doesn't matter how enlightened they are. Um, a panic attack is your vagus nerve being triggered by some kind of subconscious trauma or, or a type of trauma, um, sometimes even genetic, where then it starts to go out of control. Like the last panic attack I had, my tongue wouldn't stop shaking. And, and like I could feel the vagus nerve in my body shaking. It was real weird. Mm -hmm. um, even though my mind was perfectly calm, my body was not calm. So to control the vagus nerve is the key here for your ability to stay present and be a creator. This is very special and magnificent because not all beings in this universe have such brilliant vagus nerves, nor do they have emotional bodies. Angels don't have feelings. I know that sounds very strange, but they are a seventh dimensional being. They are not a human with a vagus nerve and an emotional body. Um, instead, feelings are frequencies and they can interact with frequencies, but they don't have what we have, which is this emotional body. So if you want to be able to get control of your emotional well-being, if you want to be able to have a still mind and be present, if you want to be able to tackle your anxiety, you need to meditate. And the, the, there's a double whammy way to do it that's really fast, because I don't know about you, but sitting still for 30 minutes with my eyes shut is not going to happen. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> right? So... So, and, and, you know, and I, and I can do that now, but I had to build up to it. But how did I start? My, my mind is extremely busy. I'm seeing 12 dimensions all the time. There's no way for me to like easily still my mind. So I had to find a way. Well, I did all this studying. The Russians and the Americans figured out that if you do gazing, it's called chatrika. If you do gazing, but if you gaze at the Sri Yantra, that it does the craziest stuff to your brain. So gazing is, and just go online and print out a black and white version of the Sri Yantra, S-R-I-Y-A-N-D-R-A, Sri Yantra. It's really cool. It's this neat geometric design with all these triangles. And it actually is a very, very powerful galactic gift mm -hmm. to humanity. And you put it, you tape it to your wall, and you put it within three feet uh, eye level and then just stare at the center of it, right? What you're trying to do is keep your eyes really still. You don't want them to look up or down or to the sides. You want, to, you want it to be right at eye level, the center of it right here. Stare at the center of this thing. Just stare at it for as long as you can. You can blink, but just stare at it at it and as you mm -hmm. stare at it stuff's gonna happen as you stare at it everything will start to disappear that means you're doing it right because what you're doing is you're stopping the micro movements of your eyes you're seeing peripheral vision all the time because your eyes are actually constantly moving a little bit but when you gaze when you do a trika you stop you stop the micro movements the whole Sri Yantra will disappear and then everything else around it will disappear. And you'll feel this really great sense of calm and connectedness. And you just mm -hmm. do it as long as you can. You're not supposed to do it more than five minutes, which is what I love about it. Mm -hmm. But the, the, what it does is because your eyes are actually an extension of your brain, it causes the whole frontal lobe to stop doing anything. You stop your mind. Literally, you stop your brain. And by doing this, you get control back. You reset your vagus nerve. You reset your mind and your emotional body. Just do this for a few minutes every day and do it maybe twice a day if you can handle that. And this is going to be a game changer because you'll feel the difference right away. You'll feel more present, more calm, more rested. You won't feel like you need coffee. You will feel a lot different. 
it's one of the best things I've ever done for myself is to meditate and to finally regain a sense of peace and stillness and recognize what it's like to be very still in the moment and connected to the universe. Mm. And you don't have to have a special belief system. If you want to, you could print out a beautiful black and white um, picture of cro the cross, Jesus's cross, and, and gaze at the center of that. Or a beautiful picture of an angel and gaze at the heart of the angel if you want to. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want. Uh, Shiva, whatever. Whoever rocks your boat. Um, you know, do what you need to do, but still your mind. And right now you will feel like you can do this. You will feel like you can move forward. You'll feel better. That's the best gift I can give today is for people to be encouraged to meditate this way. That is so powerful. I, I myself have learned how to do many, what I call the mini meditations, because not everybody has a particular time to sit still. And then, you know, you, you aches, pains, all kinds of things come up and you have to force yourself. Sometimes I will literally go outside to a park and I will pick a spot and I will just gaze. And then in a, mo in a moment, it, it happens instantly now because of so much practice, but yes. everything disappears. Everything becomes like a cloud. And, and then I, I can see a lot stuff happening after that, but, yeah. but the cloud part is like of nothingness is amazing. It's, it's, it's such, it's like a, a power nap to me. I feel rejuvenated. I feel very grounded. So that's such an amazing tip for people to do just in their homes before bed, before they get up and hit their hectic day. So many wonderful things. I think I got you frozen there. Oh, no. Please tell me I didn't lose her. <laughs> I think I lost you. Oh, no. 